Assalamu alaikum. As a lot of you know, my name is Leila Ali Osman, and today, as promised, I want us to talk about marriage. Aure Njihausawa. So I'll be mixing it, obviously, like I do all the time. Um, to me, I took out time to do a lot of research on marriage. To be honest, I've been married twice. I have a little bit of an experience, per se, concerning marriage, and um, I am someone that really had, I would say I still have a lot of reservations on marriage, but notwithstanding, I know that um, the benefit of being married is, has outweighed the benefit of not being married. So. I did this research for myself and finding all these things, I, I really wanted to share it with a lot of people, especially people who are willing to get married, I mean, who are in the face of getting married or who are in a marriage right now and are willing to work on it. So let's hope this helps. To me, I wrote down marriage to me is a union between two people who agreed to coexist together in all aspects and all areas of life. When I say all, I mean everything. Not that, oh, I want to do this and the other person doesn't want to do that and then we cannot sit down and agree to disagree on it. I made a list of how it should be. My priorities. Uh, we have chemistry, we have honesty, spirituality, money, secrets, family planning, sex, and patience. I'm going to take this one by one. And very short, this is just my own point of view. I would love to hear yours as well uh, uh, on the comment section. You could just drop yours and let's discuss. For me, chemistry is number one. For men, obviously chemistry is number one. You see somebody, you fall in love with somebody, you like how they look, and you want to know them better. For women, we want to hear listen watch and understand that person so a lot of times people misunderstand this human beings are different especially the male gender and the female gender it's like it's two people speaking different languages it takes a great mind to sit down and understand each other and go back and forth to truly want to work uh, on understanding the other person's point of view. So chemistry is sitting down with somebody, having an ample time with one person to see if this person, I can actually live with this person beyond how he looks, what he says, how he smells, beyond all that kind of thing. Chemistry is a connection. Chemistry is love. Chemistry is friendship. And that is the most important thing for me in a relationship. Friendship. Because if you're friends, you get to talk. You get to tell one another the, the inner feelings that you cannot tell a regular boyfriend. You can't just sit down and say, oh, this is how I feel. Oh, this is a, because you're afraid and you're insecure this person will judge you. But if this guy is your friend and you love him, love comes in different forms. When I was younger, I strongly feel love was this butterflies we get oh he smells really nice oh my god this mustache i love how he looks that was i'm sure that's what a lot of people in their 20s are feeling right now but believe me as you grow older love is friendship love is bond if you stay in a house my second marriage crumbled because the man i married wasn't my friend because i didn't understand him he didn't understand me we couldn't, if I go back, if I go outside and I come home, we have nothing to talk about. So that, that there's no way, what, what, what would we create for minds like mine that are very broad and they really need to be nurtured and what would I say? I like being challenged intellectually. So if I come home to somebody that just keeps quiet, definitely the marriage isn't going to work. But if I had gone through the steps, I would have known before even agreeing to marry this person so it wouldn't even get to a point where we were married and now we don't want to marry again 
So chemistry is friendship, is love, is all the butterflies, everything in, in one place. To me, that's how I feel. First of all, you have to cross that, path, that, that level before you go to the next one. That's honesty. Honesty is being built from a very tender time of a relationship. If you are not honest from the beginning, you keep lying to cover up and keep lying, then you end up in a situation where you cannot be honest because of ego, because you think you're going to lose that person. So why can't you just be honest from the start? From the start, tell her what you want. There was a guy I met. The first thing he said to me is, I want to sleep with you. And I looked at him and I was like, I don't get it. How could somebody look at you and tell you that from the first day? But that is what he wanted and he was honest. And I truly respected him for that up till date because many men would want to do that, but they never tell you and they become corny, become nice until they reach that point of sleeping with you and they run away. So this is being deceived into something that you're not ready for. Marriage is based on honesty. Honesty, if you, it's, that's why a lot of marriages crumble nowadays. You don't, you don't even wear perfume. Then you come every day with perfume. This woman fell in love with how you smell. Then she married you and you're, you're smelling. You don't even smell like the way you used to smell. One of my husbands, when I was dating them, he truly, let, because I like to take tea, he always tells me, oh, let me come to your house to have tea. I thought he liked tea. Every single time I traveled, I get a lot of tea for him. I mean, this guy doesn't even take tea. When I married him, I realized he never even liked tea. So it was something I, I felt it's so little. Some people think this is so little. But to some people, this means a lot. You, you need to show me who you are because I always show people who I am. Be honest from the start. Tell me, this is who I am. This is where I walk. This is what I do, my routine. This is this, this is that. And then if I or you as the man want to fall in love with this person after telling you all this, then that is fine. You agreed to go into this with willingly knowing every single thing. Is this like having a contract and then you hide one or two things. Then after you're, you're almost done with the contract, then the contractor will come out and say, please sir, these ones, we do not tell you, like, how would you feel? Marriage is a contract, and contract is based on honesty and transparency. Be transparent, and every single thing will fall into place. It is so difficult for a lot of people, to be honest. It takes you step by step to be able to come out the way you are, because some people are not confident enough with who they are. Then if you aren't, you're not ready for a committed relationship because you are going to fall into problems upon problems in the future when you get married. Spirituality, this falls under the category of religion and the love for God. There are some people that you meet and then you think, oh, because they don't appear the way they should, then these people are not godly. But you really, you have to sit with them to understand how spiritual they are. Then you have to hear their beliefs I've dated somebody that told me he doesn't believe in God. Then the first, my first instinct was like, oh my God, what is wrong with this person? Then I kept digging, sitting with him because he told me he doesn't believe in God. I truly became interested in who, this person and wanting to know what, it is, what is it about this person? How can you see all this miracle and not believe in God? But I never, never, not for once, because I am grown now. I am certain if I was 20, he told me this, I'm going to run away. Because at that point, I wouldn't really understand this. But now, I wanted to learn more from him and, and see his point of view. And see, oh, can I actually influence this person to change who, he, who this person is? And believe me, as we kept talking and talking and talking, this man is now a convert. He's now a Muslim. Because of the patience I had with him to understand. We had intellectual conversations, intellectual discussions with him about God and about things that are surrounding him. So you have to have a partner that you could sit and talk about your, your beliefs, 
your inner insecurity, your inner faith problems, because everybody has faith problems. Some days you wake up and you say, are you sure this is true? Are you sure? Like some people don't like to say it out, but when you're so comfortable with this person, this person is a friend, you will end up talking about your inner spirit, spirituality. And if your spirits gel, you don't have to have the same, same uh, point of view on religion. Even if you're in the same religion, I've had people that are in the same religion that don't believe in the same thing. Some will say, this hadith, I don't believe in it. If you're a Christian, somebody will say, no, me, I'm a Catholic. I don't believe in what you're saying. But you have the ability to do it in a very matured manner, understand it. Because religion is very, 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 I don't know how to put it. It's one of the most sensitive topics in the world. So if you can't sit with your partner and have be on the same page or even not on the same page but try to just understand one another, you strongly have a problem. You have to work on that as well before you even get to the step of will you marry me? Then money. Many people. I have I met only one person. Out of all the men I've seen in my life, it's only one person, one person that I know has sat me down and said to me, This is how much I earn. This is how much my salary is. And this is how much I spend in a month. He tells me, this is how much, this is my limit for the month. I can't go beyond this. Then now, if you have a partner that can tell you this, and you can tell your partner, this is how much I have. This is how much I'm saving. Can we do this? Can we do that with our money? For a reasonable woman and a reasonable man, you know your limits. So you, you, you won't have a problem with your wife. Because she already knows that, oh, my husband only earns 100k. We've removed 30,000 to do chapani. We're buying stuff for the house. 20,000 is saved for the children's school fees. This is this. We have only this left. You don't expect her to come and say, buy me super works. Buy me this. But because of the expectations, women don't know how much their husbands earn. They feel they have money. So why won't I just ask? Because you didn't tell me how much you have. You, don't t you, don't, you, you didn't tell me, oh, today we're broke. No, we don't have money. But this guy can tell me, I don't have money. This month, I have gone into a, I'm, I'm a broke ass nigga. And it's fine. Like, it's okay. I feel comfortable talking to this person. Because I know that we will not go beyond our limit if I would ever want to end up spending my life with this person. He and I could sit down and arrange our life and organize our lives like it should be. And there won't be any problems. So if I touch your phone, you won't say, oh, the reason why you're touching my phone and I don't want you to, I don't want you to see my account balance. Does that even make sense to you? For somebody that you sleep with, somebody that you have children with, and you tell the person, you don't want the person to see your account details, or she doesn't want you to know her account details. It, is, it doesn't work that way in marriage. That is why from the beginning, I said, you have to learn to coexist with each other in every aspect. You have to know everything about each other. All successful marriages are marriages that people actually tell each other almost everything. We're human. We don't expect an absolute relationship. Because if you want an absolute relationship, you can have it with human beings. You could have it with God. But with human beings, it doesn't work that way. But at least, let's say we have a 90% of trust, understanding between each other.